Hello, hello! This is the second video of my G-Developed Visual Novel tutorial. If you haven't watched the first one yet, you should go back and watch that first because that video explains how to set up the whole dialogue systems that we're going to be using. Now, we're going to be expanding on that by adding options to our game. Let's start by making a new layer called Options UI. Then click on this circle so that the objects we add to the scene will automatically be placed on this layer. Now place the options box and text. You see, the reason why the box is a tile sprite is so that we can adjust it depending on how long or how many options we're going to have. Now go to the event sheet and edit our dialog data, the .json file. Click edit with yarn and open the first passage. We can use this button to add the choice or link. Uh, first off, I don't know why they add another one of this symbol at the end. Again, I'm not a programmer. So we're just gonna delete it. I'm also gonna delete this answer text and then make another one of this link. So this means we're going to have two options. You can add as many options as you want. Just make sure to adjust your options box. Now, if you see right here, the inside of the link is separated by this vertical line. The left part is basically the text that you want the players to see in the game. For example, I'm gonna type, I choose option one and I choose option two. Meanwhile, the right part is going to be the name of the passage that these options will lead to. For example, the passage that we're calling... Okay, sorry, I keep calling them passage. I think it's supposed to call them nodes in the yarn. The node that we're currently in right now is called begin. The players can't see these node titles, but they're important for you, the developer, because the events that use these dialogues will usually require you to call out specific node names. So let's call the first one choice one and the second one, choice two. Click outside of the box, and as you can see, it automatically creates new nodes and you can move them around however you want. I'm going to fill them with some placeholder text for now. Again, you can type whatever you want. Now we can save it. Right now, the options still wouldn't appear on the screen because we haven't told the game what it needs to do whenever it encounters a link or option line type. We'll do that by making a new event. The condition is dialog line type and choose options. But we want to invert it first. For the action, we'll choose hide layer, options UI. This means you will not see the options UI elements during the regular part of the dialog. We'll make another event with the same condition, but not inverted. Alright, now we'll add the action show options UI layer. Next, we'll add two new sub events to tell the game what to do when the player scroll between the options. First action is going to be select previous option. And the second action is select next option. For the condition, you can use whatever button you want, just like before. But I'm gonna use scroll wheel up and scroll wheel down for this. Next, we're going to add another sub event. The action will be to confirm the selected option. For the condition, I'm gonna use the left mouse button release again. Next, make another sub event with the condition has selected option change. Add action, select the options txt, bb code text, set to, use the expression dialog3 vertical options list. You can read the description here. Basically, the options will be displayed as a vertical list. While the string here is the sort of indicator on what options you're currently on. The example they're giving here is an arrow, but I'm gonna use the greater than symbol and I'll add some BB code text to make it bold and to change the color to yellow. Let's preview the game now. Okay, uh, the options box isn't big enough, so I'm gonna adjust that real quick. Let's preview it again. 
Alright, everything seems to work as intended. Scroll wheel up and down, works just fine. Try clicking on the first option. Yep, let's try that again. Now click on the second option. Okay, we're done. Again, I don't want these tutorial videos to be too long. So, if you want to watch the part where I change the character names and images using command, you can click on the video right here.